Hey everyone, welcome back for another week of science. Seriously, if you're watching this, I'm really proud of you for taking the time to put first things first and work on some learning. You've made a good choice. And it's an exciting day because we're starting our very last science unit today. This is Earth Science. Before we start, I want to mention something about your packets. The packet that you should have gotten in the mail has some really good science activities in it, but they're all about food and nutrition which we already did early in the year. That's because most other schools in the county saved that unit for last, so we switched things up around a little bit and did that at the beginning of the year instead. So here are my thoughts on that. If you have internet access and you have a device that you can use for science time, please do these lessons that your teacher is posting first. This is the new information you haven't done this year, so it's a little bit more important. If you can't get to the video lessons I'm making on the or the links that your teacher posts for science, go ahead and do what's in the packet. That's definitely better than nothing. It's a good review and it'll help your brain remember all that good stuff. But if you're able, the earth science work should be first. If you're bored, if you have extra time, or you just wanna push your brain a little bit more, by all means, do both. It's certainly great and it will not hurt you. So now on to earth science. Earth science is made up of four different main parts. Geology is studying what the earth itself is made out of, like rocks and minerals. Meteorology is weather. Oceanography is studying the oceans, obviously. And astronomy is studying space and how the earth moves in space in relation to other objects. You've spent time learning a little bit about most of these already, and you'll continue to kind of circle back to them as you go on into fifth grade and then middle school and high school, constantly adding more new information. In fourth grade, we are going to focus specifically on geology and astronomy. Meowstronaut Neil Pastrong here to guide you through this. Get it? Neil Pastrong? Never mind. Never mind. I've been home way too long. So today we're mostly going to review what you learned last year during our space unit. What kind of movement happens out in space with the sun, the earth, and the moon? Got a few questions for you to think about as we get started. If I were you, I would pause this video and take some time to think about these questions, maybe jot your thinking down, or even discuss it with somebody who might be at home with you. Number one, how does the earth move? Think about what you already know. How does the earth move? Number two, what does that movement have to do with how we keep track of time? How does the Earth's movement connect to time and the way we record time? All right, two more questions. Same thing, read and then pause so you can jot or discuss. Number three, how can it be different times in different places at the exact same time? How is it a different time at a different place right now? Number four, is it tomorrow somewhere else in the world right now? Is it still yesterday somewhere? If so, why? Think about those questions. For this, you're gonna need to pause the video again in just a minute so that you can go get a piece of paper and something to write with. If you have some blue, green, and black crayons or markers, those would also be helpful. So pause and go get those things. Go. What I want you to do on your paper is draw a sun in the center. Remember, the sun is a star. It does not move. 
It stays in that same spot. The planets, including Earth, revolve or orbit around it. Our planet follows an imaginary line called the orbit. It's like a path. So go ahead and draw Earth on an orbit around the sun. You should have your sun. You should have Earth, which is definitely smaller than the sun. And then that orbit, which is not a real line in space, but we kind of imagine it's the path. Now I want you to draw a moon out beside the Earth. It should be a little bit smaller than the Earth. And go ahead and make a smaller imaginary orbit for the moon as well, because the moon orbits or revolves around the Earth, it has its own path. Now I want you to try to add some arrows. It doesn't matter which way your orbit goes. I don't care if it goes this way or this way, but with arrows, show how the moon revolves around the Earth and how the Earth revolves around the moon. There's another movement happening as well. Hopefully you have some arrows kind of like that. I want you to color on the earth, leave it like blue and green on the side that is having daytime, and then shade the side that's having nighttime in black. And you can see a picture of the one that I drew. And I added some labels on mine. I've got the earth revolving around the sun, the moon revolving around the earth. I wrote down that both the moon and the earth both rotate, so they spin in a circle. And I even labeled on my earth where nighttime is. Let's think back to third grade and go back and review some of those words that we keep hearing. The movement around something else is called a revolution. And the action word that goes with that is revolve. It takes Earth 365 days to revolve around the sun one time. How long is that? How long is 365 days? It's a year. So it's made one complete trip around the sun since May 5th last year in 2019. It will make one more trip all the way around the sun by May 5th of next year when you're finishing up fifth grade. How many revolutions has it made since you were born? If you're 10, it's made 10 full revolutions around the sun and then maybe a little bit more, unless today is your birthday, of course. We won't say how many times it's revolved around the sun since I was born. Remember that while it's revolving around the sun, it's also rotating or spinning in a circle at the exact same time. You feel dizzy? It takes 24 hours or one day to rotate all the way around. The bottom of this slide, you see my little memory trick to help me remember the difference between those two words, rotate and revolve. Rotate has a T in the middle. So like rotate, turn. Rotating is turning around. As the earth rotates, half the earth is facing the sun and having daytime, and the other half is facing away from the sun and having nighttime. Take a moment to stand up, and we're gonna try rotating and revolving together. Come on, get up. If I can do it, so can you. Find an object that you can orbit. I have a small stool that I'm sitting on, so I'm going to rotate and revolve around this at the same time. You ready? Let's do it. So I'm going to rotate, and I'm revolving around my stool. Feel dizzy yet? The reason we don't feel dizzy in real life is because it's happening a lot slower than that and everything on earth is rotating at the same time so we don't really notice the movement. Let's watch a video to remind our brains of how we get day and night. All right, so here's our globe and you see our smiley face. That's to help remember where we are. We're on the eastern side of the United States. So as the earth rotates, you'll see that come around. That's where we live. 
Okay. So here's our globe, our earth, and it rotates or spins, turns around, right? Takes 24 hours for it to go all the way around. I'm going a little bit faster than that. And at any one time, half of the earth is facing the sun. So if our flashlight here is like the sun, you can kind of see the sun spot on this side of the earth. And that means this side is having nighttime. It's dark over there, okay? So there's us smiling, it's daytime. Over on this side, it's nighttime. And as the earth rotates or turns, now we're starting to move away from the sunlight area into darkness. Whereas this part of the world is moving into the daylight. And now they have daytime and we have nighttime. Make sense? If you're not confused yet, let's go ahead and complicate things a little more. Remember, the earth is tilted while it's doing all that rotation and revolution. Look at the picture on this slide. You can see how the earth is tilted. That stick going through the center of the earth is also imaginary. There's not actually a real stick going through the earth, but it reminds us that the earth is not straight up and down. If you look closely at the pictures of the earth at different parts or different times in the revolution, different parts of the earth are facing the sun or tilted toward the sun. When it's tilted toward the sun, it has more daylight in a single day. So that helps create our seasons. Let's watch this video clip to help refresh your brain from last year about how that affects us. Hopefully you understand now that the earth is revolving around the sun and at the same time, it's also spinning or rotating in a circle each day. And it's doing those at the same time. Let me throw one more thing at you. The earth is not straight up and down with the North Pole straight at the top. Sounds confusing, but actually the earth is tilted a little bit on its side. And when scientists and people draw We'll pretend that this is the earth. When they draw the earth, sometimes they draw a little stick going right through the center of it. There's not actually a stick right through the middle of the earth, but we draw this imaginary line here and it's called an axis. And that helps remind us that the earth is actually tilted, which is really important. That tilt is what gives us seasons like spring, summer, fall, and winter. We have seasons because the earth's not straight up and down. It's tilted. If you could cut the earth in half all the way around it, where the equator is, we live in this top half. They call it a hemisphere. So we live up here. Other people live on this side. We live up at the top, okay? And if we pretend this little lamp is the sun, okay? There's our sun. And we'll pretend this is the earth. And remember, we live in the top half. So we're spinning. And as we spin or rotate, we're having day and night. Every single day that happens. Sometimes we're facing the sun, sometimes we're facing away, day and night, day and night, over and over and over. But we're also revolving around the sun. And then remember, it takes a whole year. I want you to notice at this place, we live in the top. We still sometimes face the sun and have daytime. Sometimes we turn around and face the other way and have nighttime. But notice this top half is tilted away from the sun. At that time of the year, it's winter. And we have less hours of sunlight over the course of our day. That's why in the winter, if you don't, if you don't remember, sometimes it got dark maybe before you even had dinner maybe even before you got home, especially if you went to a daycare or somewhere else after school. In the winter, we don't have as many hours of daylight in a day. Still have some, because we're still spinning around. Notice as we revolve around and the tilt stays the same, now our top half of the earth is tilted toward the sun. So we still come around back here and have nighttime, but it doesn't last as long because we're closer, tilted closer toward the sun. 
So at that time of year, we call that summer, and that's when we have more sunlight hours during the day. That's why in the summer, sometimes the sun may be out until after your bedtime, okay? And it also makes things warmer. Think again, when we're having summer, we're tilted toward the sun, what about the people that live at the bottom of the earth down here? They're having winter. And then when we move around this way, it's the opposite. Now they're tilted toward the sun closer and they're having summertime. And we're up here having winter time. We still get day and night, but our hours of daylight is a little bit different if it's winter or summer. I know that's a lot to try to remember right now. You're gonna learn a lot more about the day and night and the seasons going around next year when you're in fourth grade. But for now, I want you to try to really focus on and remember the words rotate and revolve. Those are very important. Friends, I teach second, third, and fourth grade science, and we cover a lot of different lessons in those three years. And in my opinion, this is seriously the hardest concept out of all three years. It's so hard for us to understand the movements of the earth and moon and the tilt when we can't directly feel it, we can't see it happening, we can't touch it like so many other things in science. This is hard. But that said, the easiest way to start to understand all this is to make models of the things that we can't actually see and touch. If we were at school together, you would have a globe on every single table and a flashlight and you guys would be practicing this. So I really want you to try this at home the best way that you possibly can. A lamp would work great as a sun because you don't have to hold on to it. It can just stay in one place. If you don't have a lamp, you could use a flashlight, even one on a cell phone, and maybe see if someone else at home can help hold it still because the sun doesn't move. Find an object to be the earth. If you have a globe, awesome. If you have some other kind of ball, great. If you don't have either of those, you can even use a balled up sock. I don't care, just something that can pretend it's the earth. Try to make it rotate and revolve around the sun at the same time. Do you see how half of your earth is facing the sun and half is in the darkness? So that's our day and night. Now try tilting your earth while you revolve it around the sun. Do you see how the part at the top of the earth is tilted a little bit away from your sun when it's on that side and toward the sun on the other side? That's giving you your summertime and your winter time. There's more hours in the daylight in the summer, which is why sometimes in the summer, the sun is still out when you go to bed. In the winter time, sometimes the sun sets before we even eat dinner. When it's summertime, in the top half of the earth, it's winter on the bottom half of the earth. Right now it's May, so we're getting really close to summer. In Australia, it's fall, and they're actually getting really close to winter time. They still use the same calendar we use, so it's still May for them, but to them, June, July, and August is winter, and the weather is cooler, and the sun sets earlier at night. They go to school during those months because it's winter. Then they get a really long summer break in December, January, and February. So they still celebrate Christmas in December, like a lot of people here do, but Christmas is technically in the summer and the weather's warmer. I have friends in Australia who celebrate Christmas and New Year's by going swimming at the beach. Your teacher linked a website that you can check out where you can check out where on the world it's daylight or darkness at any one time. If you look at the picture in this slide, the date and time I looked at it is at the bottom. It says May 4th and then the time says 1432. In case you didn't know, that's a 24 hour clock instead of a clock that goes 12 hours and then repeats 12 more. So 14 o'clock is two hours past 12 o'clock noon. So 1432 means 232 in the afternoon. You don't have to understand that. I was just giving you some extra information about what that meant. 
If you're watching this on May 5th, around 11 o'clock in the morning, that means in Australia right now, it's one o'clock in the morning later that night, like almost into the next day after midnight and people are sleeping and it's getting close to winter time. If you look on our picture, there's where we live, right around there having daylight. And here is Australia and they're having darkness. It's a really weird thing to think about. If you see the buttons at the very top, you can switch back and forth between map and satellite. And so it kind of looks like, the satellite one looks like you might be up in a space shuttle looking back down on the Earth. You can also explore a lot of other things on that website. There's a world clock and time zones up at the top. And that's where you can see what day it is or what time it is in other cities all around the world. So have fun exploring that. When you're done with this video, please go to the other links your teacher shared with you today. One of them is the YouTube song we watched last year to the tune of Watch Me, Whip It Nene. But it's perfect for practicing Rotate and Revolve. Friday, we'll spend a lot of time learning all about the moon and its phases. Here are some questions I want you to think about before then. Why does the moon seem to change shape over time? Sometimes it's a full moon. Sometimes it's just a skinny little crescent. Why does the moon light up? How does it get its light? If you can, go outside one night this week after dark, and as long as it's not too cloudy, take a look at the moon. Observe it, maybe sketch a picture. What shape is it? What part is lit up? All right, I will see you on Friday. Have a great rest of your week. Bye, guys. Thank you.